Not sure that's the best spot to take a nap there, Dakota. Hey, Well, at least your head's in the shade. Howdy, YouTube! My wife and I just bought a shipping container and we need to go move the thing. We have been using this uh, tarp garage thing, kind of as like our extra storage and kind of sort of as like a paint booth, but it hasn't been working very well for a paint booth. And a little place to try to work once in a while when I can't work here in the garage because my wife is painting, stuff like that. But that thing blew away in a storm on December 15th of 2021. So now that that not garage is gone, we were in the market for something to replace it. And I started looking at prefab garages and stuff like that. And, and I'm not really in a position to put something like that up or spend that kind of money on that right now. But what we decided is we could go ahead and just get a shipping container for now, for now, and get us by until we get a nice shop built or something like that. And we hopped online, started looking around, and lo and behold, the prices of shipping containers are through the roof right now. Everybody's buying them for some reason. They are in high demand. So I've been scouring the local classifieds for quite a while, and a listing popped up for a container that's been converted into three rooms inside. There's one that's a storage room, a little office type setup, and then a blank one that hasn't been touched. Well, it's got a few shelves in it. And I think that'll work perfect for our paint room, provided we add some ventilation to it. So we've gone down twice to look at the shipping container. The first time just to see if it was what we wanted. And I didn't take the money out of the bank that day to pay for it. So we went back later to pay for it and then to take some good measurements and really look at where the container was sitting and see if we could move it. Uh, the customer that I did the low boy trailer rebuild, uh, build all the gussets for, he said he would gladly bring the container up for us, but of course he doesn't have a way to load it onto his trailer. And I said, well, maybe we can figure out some way with my crane truck to lift it up and get it up on his trailer. But when we went down the second time, to really look over the shipping container, we realized there's no way we're gonna get an 18 wheeler into this backyard. We either need a tilt trailer with a winch so we can just tilt back and suck the container up on it. We can come in at one angle, there's a certain angle we can get through that probably would work for that. Or we need to find someone with one of those mules that comes in and just picks the container up and drive it out of the yard and then they put it up on their trailer. Well, both of those options are really expensive. So after doing some thinking about it and looking online, I decided the best way to do this is to just build a dolly that goes under the container and build a hitch that goes into the shore locks on front and drag this thing home myself. So I have been making all kinds of plans for this. I uh, all sorts of notes, how I wanna do it. Not that you can see any of this in the light. Um, coming up with some sketches for how I wanna build the dolly. Uh, how I want to build the hitch. Lots of note taken here, and I think I have it all figured out, but I'm sure something will change along the way. So today I'm going to run out and steal the axles out from underneath my trailer. I have a 12 foot enclosed trailer with tandem 3,500 pound axles under it. I know that's only 7,000 pounds, but I did the math. If I figure the weight of the dolly and the weight of the tongue and add a couple hundred more pounds for the stuff that's done to the interior of the shipping container, um, and I set the axle 150 inches from the rear of the shipping container. The axle will be carrying 6,145 pounds and the tongue on the hitch will be carrying 2,155 pounds. That tongue weight of 2,000 pounds is way over what my little two inch receiver hitch on my truck can handle. So I'm going to build a gooseneck hitch, but it won't be an actual up and over gooseneck. It'll just be a straight tongue, two and five sixteenths ball. I have found a coupler, it's coming in the mail, that has a uh, tongue weight rating of 2,300 pounds, something like that. I don't remember what it is. So yeah, I'll have to make a hitch for the truck, a hitch for the container, and a little dolly to go under the container. Gonna be a little bit of building here. But yeah, it's gonna work out weight rating wise. So I don't have to go buy expensive axles and all that to make sure I'm within weight ratings. So today I'm gonna run out and steal the axles out from underneath my trailer. To get the tires off the ground of this enclosed trailer, I just put some scrap rectangular tubing pieces on the back and just ran the hitch jack up. Hmm. 
This worked pretty good. Now, once I did have it in the air, I did go ahead and put a jack stand under the trailer too, make sure that jack didn't screw itself back in. Once the tires were removed, I tried to remove all the shackle and spring bolts and they are stuck on there. They're self-locking nuts to begin with, but they've been on there literally 20 years. This is a 2002 trailer. So I ended up using some heat and that got the nuts loose. Came right off after that. And I was able to just drive out the bolts pretty easy. Well, these tires are extremely weather checked. I don't think I trust them anymore. That's not cool. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go get new ones put on. So we're gonna get this done today and we'll be back later. Just got back from town from getting brand new tires. And brand new bolts and uh, shackle straps, whatever you call those things, um, and the bushings. So this bag right here is $116. Whew, wasn't expecting that. Got all four tires mounted for total bill was $439. So a little bit of an expensive day in town. <laughs> but hey, that's the way it goes. I needed tires on this trailer bad anyway. Um, and after taking apart all these bolts, those bushings were completely shot. A lot of these bolts were starting to wear. Uh, you know, the trailer needed some major maintenance. This is all stuff that needed to be done. I'm not wasting money here at all. Um, it's not like all this money is going just to moving the shipping container. You know, this is repairing my trailer. I've got these rails sitting here on top of the shackles. That's not how it's going to go at all. It'll be the other way, but anyway. I'm trying to figure out where the holes are going to be because I want the frame of this thing to sit on these two angle iron that run this way so I can unbolt this, uh, whatever you call this whole frame up here. I don't know the word for that. Um, so I can just take this axle assembly and slide it back under my enclosed trailer, my welding trailer over there. So that's going to bolt on. So I have got my holes marked where I want that to bolt together. I'm going to slide that up here in the mill and start drilling all these holes and hopefully this will make sense to you eventually. Well, I have the frame tack welded together. I think it's square, I don't know. Now I've gone through and clamped all the hangers in place. So now I'm gonna go through and tack weld those in. Then I will take the frame off the axles so I can flip it around in different positions and weld it solid at this point. Put this angle iron across the top of the tires here to make sure that my measurements are working out. 
And I think these tires are shorter than my old tires because I was convinced I needed 18 inches from the top of the frame up, which would be the same as from the top of this axle to the top of the tires. Because, you know, if this bottoms out, that axle is up against the frame. Uh, so, yeah, I, I knew for a fact I needed 18 inches and I was going to go 19 inches to get that to clear enough. But this actually measures not even quite 17 inches, about a quarter inch shy. So, 18 inches should give me more than enough uh, to clear the top of those tires. So, yeah. Um, so next I'm going to take the channel iron and set it in here. And I hope I gave myself enough room in there looking that hole over now. I'm going to use 8 inch channel iron for the frame rails on this dolly for two reasons. One, it's sitting here because this is leftover from a project I just got done doing for a customer. And two, it's definitely going to be strong enough. Now being 8 inch channel iron, that means I can't put it in my 7 inch bandsaw. So I'm going to use the awesome Milwaukee dry cut saw to make quick work of making these the right length. Now I'm going to take the mag drill and drill these holes into the channel iron. Alright, well, I'm going to do the other five and then I'll just uh, bring it back when I onto something else and then you show you doing all that. The next step is to build my risers that'll go from the top of this angle iron up to the square tubing but we'll raise the square tubing up about seven and a half inches from where it's at. So I'm gonna cut the main part out a quarter inch plate on the plasma table, then I'm gonna build some gussets for the sides here too. So I'm gonna slap a piece of a quarter inch plate on the plasma table. We'll cut out one, see if it's about what I want. And if it is, we'll cut out the other three, and then we'll start working on the gussets. Well, that one looks good. The dimensions look right. I don't see a reason to change anything. That's basically exactly what I was wanting. So uh, I think I'll go, just go ahead and cut out the other three. I'm trying to decide what I need to do first. Uh, if I need to put these bolt holes in, or if I need to tack weld the square tubing in place first. I really feel like if I tack weld the square tubing to these plates, that it'll kind of help hold it in place and make drilling these three holes real easy. I'm just going to use the mag drill on these three holes here. I'm not going to cut off these gussets and part mud flaps on the outside corner of the trailer here, making them just out of uh, 10 gauge metal, basically eighth inch. So this piece will be my gusset. strengthen this uh, square tubing just a little bit. Don't really feel like it's necessary, but you know, nothing too strong ever broke, right? And I went ahead and made it longer and wider than what I was planning because it was just going to be a triangle across here. It's actually going to be more like that. Because this is a great mud flap. It covers up that tire really well. Alright, I'll get that welded in and 
show you what that looks like. I think for that, I can take the tire back off. Next, I'm going to take this piece of three inch by three inch by quarter angle iron, set it up in here, clamp it in place, this angle iron here, this one around this way, is just sitting on top to keep everything level. Now, what this angle iron does is I'm going to have a bolt over here that will clamp down on the lip of the container. Out here there's going to be a plate that comes up and a bolt that goes into it. That way I can push the container side to side a little bit, make for micro adjustments to get it centered a little bit more on this dolly, get a little more square. That way the thing doesn't, you know, crab walk down the road or something if the axles are just a little bit crooked. I can use that bolt and work, work, work. So be a plate out here with a bolt in it. And then I need to make another little plate with a hole in it that this bolt will sandwich down onto this lip that's going to be on the container. Shouldn't be too long to make either one of those. I'll probably do both of those just on the plasma table. So that should be real easy. And then just have to weld the nut onto this plate out here and actually make the bolts because I'm going to use ready rod because I need a bunch of thread. All these pieces that I cut will go in the channel iron like that. I'm putting them right above the weld on mounts there for the springs and that will kind of transfer the forces from those spring mounts up through and more into stuff. So I'm going to weld these in real quick and then I'm going to put it in the cross member. Cut out these mounts. This will go in the channel iron. And this one will bolt to it and it will go on the end of an angle iron and this will be a cross member across the center of the dolly here. I don't really want to use angle iron. I wish I had some square tubing on hand but I don't have a piece of square tubing long enough anywhere in stock at the moment. So, angle iron it is. This will work. This is basically just kind of like a lateral stiffener. That's what's going on here. So, let's install it and I'll show you afterwards.
Last thing I'm going to do is put in these lateral support braces. Hopefully it'll keep this thing from wobbling side to side so much. So I'm going to weld these in. And yes, I did take the sanding disc and sand underneath there, get rid of all the rust. It should be good clean metal. We should be good to go. And then I'll drill two holes in the bottom down there with the mag drill and put in two half inch bolts and bolt that to that bottom angle iron. And this thing should be done other than slapping the tires back on. bearings greased so at this point we're just going to push this thing outside and it'll sit out there until I'm ready to put it on the truck and haul it down to the shipping container. Just real quick the end of this video here I'd just like to make a couple comments on the design of this dolly first off I'm using axles that I already have so that kind of influenced my design of it um, I don't want to put a lot of money into moving this container so source what I have right and on that note I would like to say twin 3500 pound axles is very marginal for moving a 40 foot container this dolly would be great for 20 foot containers no problems whatsoever. But if you're going to move 40 footers, I would highly recommend getting twin 7,000 pound axles at least. Also, my axles are drop axles. So that made things a little more complicated for me in trying to get to the right height that I needed for the dolly to clear the top of the tires. So straight axles would be the best way to go. And another thing is I plan to take these axles and that bottom angle iron frame will stay there everything unbolts off of that and I'll just take these axles with that frame and slide it back underneath my 12 foot enclosed trailer that I have and then if I ever need these axles again for another project to move something I can just unbolt it out from under there slide the axles out as an assembly and use it on something again it'll be kind of like a modular thing for me if you're going to build one of these dollies yourself and it's a dedicated container mover I would just buy some two by six rectangular tubing, maybe three sixteenths wall. So two by six by three sixteenths and just run two chunks for, you know, uh, frame rails forward to back, I guess it'd be that way. And then two pieces across the tops of those 
to catch the container out here that your alignment bolts and your clamp bolts all go on to out here. You might need a little bit of a spacer between your rails that run forward and your cross members. Probably wouldn't actually be able to sit this right on top of each other, but it'd be pretty darn close, I would think. And that ends my thoughts on this dolly build. Next, we will build the hitch that clamps onto the front of the container and goes to my truck. So hopefully that video will be linked up here, wherever I put that. And if not, then it should just show up next in the subscription feed. And if you like this video, please be sure to go down and click that like button. That really helps me a lot. It really drives the algorithm. And the more views I get, the more videos I can make. So appreciate the likes, that's for sure. All right, see you in the next one.